Well, welcome everyone. We are so excited that you're here and joining us for the 2021 season reveal, a season of character. We are so excited that you're here uh, for a multitude of reasons. One, we always like to reminisce during these times, uh, whether you're a volunteer at home and you've helped us create some fantastic memories over the last year, or if you're a ticket buyer, you might be uh, reminiscing over some of the great experiences you've had who knows how long uh, that, since we've been here. But what we are excited about and why we're here tonight is where we're going in the future. And so we have a lot of things that we're gonna talk about tonight, but some of it looks a little bit different if you can't tell. For starters, we're digital tonight. We're here and we are all throwing a virtual season reveal party. And we're certainly excited about that still, but uh, it might make us feel a little bit disconnected comparatively and we don't want that. So if you're at home, whether you're watching uh, on the TV or you're somewhere you're watching on your mobile device, we definitely want you to let us know that you're here. So in the comment section below, whether on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and let us know that you're here. And while we're here, keep an eye on that comment section throughout the evening because we might have a few prizes and giveaways uh, while uh, that might appear in the comment section if you're paying attention. So keep an eye on the comment section while you're learning all of we have planned over the next year. And in addition to that, um, we truly believe that our connection will supersede our distance right now. And so while we are in that, uh, in the spirit of being connected, we also will have a Zoom link in our comment section where after the season reveal, all of staff, myself included, will be at, at, in that Zoom meeting and you'll be able to ask questions about everything that you learn, whether that's uh, the Lantern series or our camps and classes and our educational programming with Justin um, and Siobhan with the theater or Mary with volunteering. Um, whoever it might be that you wanna to talk to will have a couple of different rooms for you to go to and ask questions, really whatever's on your mind about that. So uh, that link for the Zoom meeting will be after, uh, will be in the comment section. And by the way, you'll want to be there because immediately following the season reveal, we will uh, we'll have a, a virtual toast as a community. So please join us uh, via that link afterwards. Given our current situation and being socially distant, um, you may notice that we've changed a few things around here, but what you see right now is this light behind me. In the theater, there is an age old tradition at the end of a full day of rehearsals or performances or, or whatever. The last person uh, grabs a lone light and places it on the stage and turns it on. And that lone light is left on until someone returns back to that space. Um, there are many controversies over why this tradition takes place. Some people think of it solely as a safety precaution so that nobody falls off the stage and breaks a leg. Um, some people insist it is for those maybe spirits that remain in the theater um, that uh, this is a courtesy of leaving on the light maybe. And some people insist that it is a more sacred tradition and honors the space as a theater. It is often talk, talked about and regardless of the opinions, it's still widely practiced. Hearing uh, this may sound odd and being someone who's grown up in the arts for a while, I will not deny its oddity. However, today I think that the, the ghost light has become something bigger these days. Regardless of the belief or origin of the ghost light, the implication is simple. We will return. Setting it out for the next person to not trip or honoring the space, none of this matters without a return. And so we will. We don't know when exactly, we don't know what it may look like when we do, and we don't know how we're gonna get there. But the arts, the theater, the concerts, the community, the experiences that we create here at Elm Street will at some point continue. At Elm Street, we have often talked about community, and when we do, we are hardly confining that to a place. And I've said before that our connection now transcends that distance that we have. And right now, we have to rely on that connection. There are still many unknowns, but that doesn't preclude us, especially Elm Street, from continuing to build community. And so we're doing a number of things. Right now, we're, we're holding classes online. We've seen interviews. Um, you've seen some fun radio shows that we've done online. There's a lot of things that we're doing online right now. Uh, but beyond, and, and after the season, we'll, we'll actually 
continue that with some new artists from the Lantern series upcoming and certainly some of the directors for the shows that we have selected. Um, but beyond that, the, the, the implication is simple, is that we'll come back here and we'll be able to continue to create art, but more importantly, build community together. We want to take a moment to talk about our volunteers. Really, they just make up the DNA of who we are and what we do. So this year, an uh, announcement, if you have not heard, um, during our season reveals, we announced new staff members. And since last season reveal, we actually hired on Mary Quarles as our events and volunteer coordinator. And so Mary is going to take a quick moment and talk about our volunteers um, in this time, but also if you might be interested in volunteering. Um, we are so thrilled to have Mary with us, and we're thrilled that you get to meet her. Hey y'all, I'm Mary Quarles, and I'm the Events and Volunteer Coordinator here at Elm Street. I get to work with the community and our volunteers to create a lot of memorable moments. I get to watch the creativity and the teamwork happen behind the scenes, and I get to watch people experience art for the first time in front. It's something I won't take for granted ever again. When the staff sat down and we decided to call this season the season of character, I immediately thought of our volunteers. See, whether they help us out on the green by setting up tables and chairs for a concert for our Lantern series, they're back in the shop working on scenic stuff, or they're out here serving you a drink during intermission, each one of them does what they do because they want to make our community better through the arts. I think that says a lot about their character already. Let me introduce you to a couple of them now. People can tap into their inner creativity and, and learn. There's a real sense of support, camaraderie, and hey, let's, let's all make each other better. It is a safe place for my kids. Everybody's creative here. Everybody wants, and everybody's rooting for everyone else. Hey, I'm Allison Hodges. My name's Barbara Dixon. My name is Brad Leak. I'm Byron Harvey, and I got involved with Elm Street a little over 10 years ago now. We first, as a family, got involved in the spring of 2016. I've been doing scenic build work and design work for the better part of four or five years. And I have been involved with Elm Street since 2004. My oldest at the time was in fourth grade and took a class here, and they performed Music Man Junior at the end of that class. Loved learning improv here and being involved for a number of years with the, the I Think Improv troupe. I used to think of myself as a, as a perfectionist, and that's really not a good thing. When I started doing build work, I learned very quickly that perfection is impossible, and even learned to embrace imperfections, that that was part of the character uh, of the end result. And I actually started applying that to, to my regular work. It, it certainly has helped me develop areas of my life, you know, improv, golly, that's kind of scary, you know? And I'm not scared of doing it anymore. I had the privilege to direct The Wizard of Oz. So when they came to me and they said, we know your heart and we know that you're gonna command excellence from a cast and are gonna be able to get something from them that we hope transcends out into the community that will then push adults and kids alike. Cause it was a unique thing to combine kids and adults and what we were asking them to do with this show. But then to do it alongside my mom and my daughter, the fact that there's a place like that here and to have it be of such a desire that the excellence is important, it's a game changer. I think Elm Street is sort of the gateway drug into creativity. Creativity is part of a driving force to, to happiness and meaningfulness. I majored in art, I became an art director many different places till all of a sudden I became ill and I didn't know what was going on and it was horrible and it turned out I had MS. What am I gonna do now because I have nothing in my life left that's artistic? The art family here has embraced me, shown me my way that I don't feel like an invalid anymore. If, if you know about MS, you go through different stages and I should have, I got diagnosed when I was 44. I just turned 65 and I have not switched over to the progressive, which I should have by now. Really, I owe my health to Elm Street. 
Life change doesn't always happen at like a crux moment. Sometimes it's something that evolves. And when our family was first involved and we watched our daughter in that first show, I remember sitting there and I even said to my husband, there's so much potential here. I think we need to stay and how it has evolved and changed in just the last four or five years, I'm excited about where it's gonna go. I think that a place like Elm Street just adds such value to living in, in Woodstock and in the surrounding, like I don't live here in Woodstock, I'm, I drive a few miles, but it adds such value to have a place like this uh, where the community comes together, shows off its talent, and, and has enjoyable times together and builds each other up, so. We all want the same thing. We want success for our community. We want success for our artists. Y'all have created a community here. There is a sense of give and take and reciprocity that is going on here. It's beautiful. Now, here's the good news. You can become a part of this community. All you have to do is go to our website, elmstreetarts.org, and click on the upper right-hand corner where it says volunteer. I have a little free time on my hands these days, and I bet you do too. I would be happy to talk with you about all of the ways that you can help us make our community better through the arts. And as soon as it's safe, we'll welcome you with open arms. Now, to our volunteers, I just want to say thank you for continuing to reach out and take care of each other and continuing to help us create and promote art during this really unique season that we're in. I'm seeing all of your character right now and I am proud to know each and every one of you. Take care of yourselves, stay safe and stay at home because I can't wait to hug you when this is all over. Our volunteers really do make us who we are and we couldn't be prouder of who we have volunteering with us, not just for Elm Street, but for our community as a whole. So from me as well, thank you volunteers. And we hope if you aren't, that perhaps you might be interested soon. Now, it seems that it's about that time where we start sharing everything. So let's start uh, with a couple of property updates. First, if you've been supporting local here in downtown while also staying safe, you've probably seen that we are under construction. Um, this started right before we were being socially distanced, but there is some noticeable progress on our property right now, and that's with our natural playground. We helped design this uh, with the city. We partnered with the city in making it happen, and they are taking over the construction part and moving along, and it is a lot of fun to see the progress. It, it is built naturally, or we, I should say, we designed it naturally so it's built into the ground um, and uses a lot of the natural elements around it but beyond that uh, when it's finished we'll have a lot of artistic components to it as well as um, some opportunities for us to help program offering free classes etc now I'm sure a lot of you especially the kids might be anxious as to when that playground will be opening we are a little bit delayed due to the current circumstances but every day there is progress on site and with that, we're building more and more excitement as the playground develops. So look online and definitely check, check out the social media pages for the city and Elm Street as well. We'll certainly be announcing, but right now we're projected to have an open date for the natural playground in June. Also, along with that, we have designed, and again, we worked with the city to design a, um, a shipping container concept where we retrofit shipping containers and place them on the property, and those will be public restrooms when we're done with them. Those should be open around the same time as well. The shipping containers are actually under construction and will be delivered um, to us here in a few weeks. And then we'll have to do um, some build out once they are delivered. But ultimately, you should see the shipping containers um, be completed around the same time. And we are excited to have those on property as well. And it might, who knows, provide a canvas or uh, something uh, for some murals down the road. So we're excited to see uh, those, uh, those developments unfold. And while you, while some of you have been to a couple of season reveals, you may be curious about the Kish Center. 
Uh, a while ago, we launched a concept to continue our artistic and cultural initiatives. And one of the things that we felt like we needed was a ceramics and pottery studio. Well, uh, Thomas Fruman and Mary F. Kish were married and um, going to jobs and continuing their life as normal, um, when, uh, but they always had artistic hobbies. And Mary's was actually pottery and ceramics. And so um, one of the things that they always wanted to do with their house uh, was create uh, a kiln, a space for her to put that to practice. Unfortunately, Mary is no longer with us, uh, but Tom made a generous gift in her name to finally build out that ceramic studio. And so the Granger House is becoming the Mary F. Kitsch Center for Ceramics and Pottery. That, if you have been out, uh, you might have noticed, has also been under construction. And we've been working on that for the past couple of months now, and we should be opening soon. So much so that while we uh, are a little bit delayed due to COVID-19, we plan on opening up registration for some of our classes and workshops this summer. And you can take a look on our website for information when that becomes available. But we are excited to honor the Kish Center and Mary and, uh, and their legacy in creating this center while also excited to open up a new area for us to have that artistic practice ready for our community to take part in. All right, I think that concludes some of the property updates for now, but we'll have a few more a little bit later this evening. That being said, we're gonna send it over to Justin, who is gonna talk about a lot of our educational components of classes, camps, and certainly our Spotlight and Family Productions. So, without further ado, here's our collage series. Hey you guys, thank you so much for watching. We miss seeing you so much at Elm Street. I know you guys are missing being here too. If I have not gotten the chance to meet you, my name is Justin. I'm on staff here at Elm Street in charge of education and marketing. And I'm gonna talk to you guys today about our collage series, our educational programming. So our students have a ton of character. I'm just gonna flat out say that right then and there. And it is so inspiring to see them come up through our educational program in classes, in camps, our spotlight productions, because they get a really awesome opportunity to grow and develop their skills and really find out who they are, who their true character is through the arts. And I think that is something I'm really passionate about and I hope you're passionate about as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about some of the things that you can look forward to in our upcoming 2020-2021 season. For our classes and camps this upcoming season, we are going to continue to expand what kind of offerings we have. So doing things like offering a dance class that you might not be able to take at your school, or giving an opportunity to learn how to paint something in a different way, learning how to design lights or work on a prop. We feel that those skills are so important for our students and not necessarily if the arts is something that they wanna continue with for a potential career. We wholeheartedly believe that being involved in the arts, whether that's at Elm Street or you know, wherever they may be in their life, we feel that the arts teach them so much, not only about themselves as a person, but how they're able to interact with the world around them and be able to collaborate, to listen, and to really dig deep within themselves and create some really, really beautiful memories. So, I know everybody is very excited because I'm getting towards the point where I'm gonna talk about our spotlight shows and our summer shows that we're gonna be doing. So here is a sneak peek for you right now and then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them. Thank you. 
right? Like these shows are going to be so cool. All right, I'm gonna break down them just a little bit so you know the difference. The first two shows that we're doing, Alice in Wonderland Jr. and Freaky Friday, are part of our Spotlight program. So that's our students doing completely student-run productions with their peers, and we it, it's a big staple for us at Elm Street, so we always love getting to get that energy from our students really putting themselves into these parts and everything that they're doing. Then our other two shows, How I Became a Pirate and Junie B. Jones, are part of our family series for the summer. And uh, it's part of uh, TYA, Theater for Young Audiences. So the shows traditionally have adult actors in the roles, but the shows themselves, uh, anyone can come enjoy because they are a lot of fun. I enjoy uh, a good TYA musical myself, and you'll really enjoy the two that we have coming up this summer. So, I want to go ahead and break down Alice in Wonderland Jr. for you a little bit. So Alice in Wonderland, we're familiar with the title. It's a classic book, it's a classic Disney movie, and it is going to be a great way to kick off our fall spotlight. It's playing in November, it's going to feature students in grades 3 through 8, and there's just a ton of opportunities for our students to be involved in that. So obviously we have Alice in the Mad Hatter, the Cheshire Cat, but there are so many other different roles and different wacky characters that are in that script that our students are really gonna get to sink their teeth into and really become the world that is Wonderland. And the creative team that we have behind this show are putting together some really, um, really untraditional ways to make this traditional story happen. So everybody remembers The Wizard of Oz when we did it, and you remember Dorothy, played by Miss Amanda Lynn Simmons. Well, she's gonna be the director and the choreographer for this show. So I'm, yeah, I'm already hearing like all the kids freaking out at home uh, from that. So we're really, really pumped for her to be involved in this production. And Kyle Eason, he's been involved in Rep Tour and he directed Jack and the Beanstalk a couple summers ago. He's gonna be stepping in as the educational instructor uh, for that component as well. So we cannot wait to see you this November for Alice in Wonderland Jr. for you just to sit back, relax with your family, and just escape into this beautiful and wacky world of Wonderland. Then, in February, we have our Spring Spotlight, Freaky Friday. I am so pumped for this show. Like, I kid you not, I listen to it all the time. It is so much fun, and it's very, it's very modern and contemporary, and one of the reasons I really like it so much is it is so relatable for our teen actors. I think, you know, having a show that allows them to, to play kids their own age, as well as really talk about issues that they're facing with their peers and with their parents is really important. And notice I did not say Freaky Friday Junior, right? We are doing the full production of Freaky Friday. I can't say that this is an Elm Street first because we did it with School of Rock, but I can guarantee that this is going to be a very fun experience just like School of Rock, where these kids are going to really just be immersed in this show and really have it as their own. And I promise when you see it in February of 2021, that there's gonna be a lot of really touching moments, there's gonna be a lot of hilarious moments, and it's going to be a show that you do not wanna miss. We are doing How I Became a Pirate, a swashbuckling musical based on the children's book, and to me, this show just screams summer and fun and adventure, and I cannot wait for you to see all of Elm Street turned into a pirate ship and to see everybody in pirate garb. And I hope you as well put on some of your best pirate garb too when you come out and see the show because it is going to be a lot of action, a lot of adventure, and it's, it's meant for everybody. Boys, girls, you can be a pirate and you're going to learn how to be a pirate through this show. So grab your peg leg, grab your parrot, your eye patch, whatever it is you want, and we will see you this June, this next June, for How I Became a Pirate. 
And to finish out our season of character in July of 21, we have Junie B. Jones, The Musical. Yes, based on the book series that I grew up reading when I was in elementary school. And this show is full of color and it is full of a lot of fun songs and dancing and Really, I think what this show does really well, like Fancy Nancy, is it takes situations that kids normally face and it really puts it on their terms and really elevates the drama that they really feel inside. So whether that's, you know, making friends with the new kid who's part of your bus route or finding out that you have to get glasses. These are things that first graders really do deal with on a daily basis and this show is gonna be a really fun way to end the season, to end the summer, and if there are kids out there who may be a little nervous about going back to school in August, I hope that this show relieves some of that anxiety that they're feeling in a really fun and positive way. So we hope to see you at the theater throughout all of our season of character, but again, in November, you've gotta check out Alice in Wonderland Jr. In February, we want you to come and see Freaky Friday. And then over the summer, you have two shows to check out. You've got How I Became a Pirate in June and then Junie B. Jones in July. So thank you so much for watching and sharing this really fun and magical moment with us right now. I, I hate that we can't be in person to share this news with you, but I am very excited um, and really happy to know that once this is all said and done and we're on the other side of this, that we're gonna be back in the swing of things and I cannot wait to see you there. So, thanks. Our education initiatives are truly vital to what we do here at Elm Street, not just because it's opportunities for students to, to learn something new, but because it really offers all of our students an opportunity to grow. And we're excited to continue that and unfold that in the ways that Justin talked about in the future. Speaking of some of the education, um, we have a couple of events that we are continuing as normal that have, have been great, uh, but we're un gonna unfold them just a little bit more. Um, first, as I said, speaking of education, Joe Lemo with the I Think Improv Troop has done a fantastic job in growing uh, the classes uh, for that, whether you're a teen or an adult. And so those actually, those levels actually unpacked is not just a single class that you can take, but there's actually levels associated with that now. So you can definitely check that out on the website as we go into next season. Joe's done a remarkable job with that and has done a remarkable job with the troupe and giving us laughs every month with the I Think Improv troupe. So look for that to continue next year in the 2021 season as well. In addition to that, we will also be continuing Last Laugh, so keep an eye out for that comedy competition for Metro Atlanta. It Every year is a fun event, it's full of laughs and a few surprises along the way, so you won't want to miss that. So keep an eye out on our website for when the Last Laugh returns. And finally, for our visual art community, we are looking to continue our On the Green. So look for that this year in October. And we look forward to building community through the visual arts and a great festival out with the open air. Speaking of the green, it's time for our next round of programming announcements. So we're gonna take it over to the Lantern Series. The Lantern Series is something we started about three years ago and certainly we had been concepting years prior to that. But what's unfolded has been something really beautiful under the stars as different artists from around the world share their craft and a little bit of their heart. Rather than just a single genre and we just celebrate jazz or celebrate rock or, or whatever have you, um, we've been celebrating different genres with each concert. And that certainly created a lot of community conversations um, built around that table. But beyond that, it's been something special to watch as we discover things that we otherwise would be missing here in our community. So without further ado, here is Brian, our production manager, to announce the Lantern Series. Hey everyone, I'm really excited for you to check out this Lantern Series season. We have the biggest, and most talented, and most well-known season yet to date in store for you. They all bring different personalities, different cultures, different ideas, 
all for you to create community around your table. Hope you're ready. Check it out. Let's fall in love. Why shouldn't we fall in love? Our hearts are made of it. Let's take a chance. Why be afraid of it? Let's close our eyes and make our own. There is a light in the sky.
money someday. And that was a quick look at our Lantern Series season. We're really excited to bring it to you, and because of that, we want to take a quick moment to dive into each artist. First up, Crystal Bowersox. Crystal Bowersox is opening our season. You might remember her from season 9 of American Idol, where she placed in the top two, and she's been taking on the indie folk genre ever since. She brings a unique experience to every venue she visits across the U.S. and beyond, and we're really excited to bring her here to Elm Street's Green. If you know country music, you know David Nail. With hits like Whatever She's Got, Let It Rain, and Red Light, he's been all across the top 50 charts. We're excited to bring him here to you, and if you were at Lone Bellow, we listened to your feedback. You really loved the feeling of the acoustic, intimate set they gave. We talked with David's management, we were able to get a trio to create that same experience for you with the unique spin that David has to bring. If you've been to a Black Market Trust concert, you know the energy is high. They give their all in every single performance, and we hear that from their fan base, and we've seen it art firsthand too. We're excited for that Frank Sinatra sound to come to Elm Street screen and bring the 20s back to the 20s. Y'all, you have no idea how excited I am for Wee Banjo 3. It popped on our radar a little bit after the end of the first season. I found some concert tickets in Atlanta, and we decided to go check them out. Our staff was absolutely enamored. We were up on our feet dancing just like every other audience member. Steve Martin's even been quoted after seeing them saying that he didn't know a banjo could be played that way. We're really excited for this one and you don't want to miss out. And to kick off spring of 2021, we're bringing in Time for Three. Their blend of pop music and classical music is a unique spin that our community has not had the chance to see before. And sometimes you just need some good old classic country rock and roll. And that's where Little Texas comes into play. They're bringing their 80s and 90s hits over to Elm Street screen. We're proud to have them and we hope you're ready to enjoy them. Folk music is the music of the people. And Gina Chavez brings the music of Latin America everywhere she performs. She's a bilingual artist, which means you're gonna hear music both in English and in Spanish, but understand that music is the universal language. Plus she's a lot of fun. We hope to see you there. Canadian artist Lila Bialy is one of the most high energy smooth jazz musicians I've ever seen. She's a Juno Award winner, which is like a Canadian Grammy, and we're excited to have an artist that's that high of a caliber in the jazz genre who come to our stage and bring that level of energy, and we think you'll enjoy it too. And finally, Ian Sherwood. He's just one man, but he fills up that entire stage. With his looping device, he re-records over his voice, his saxophone and his guitar to make it sound like he has a full band up there on that stage. You'll get entranced in those layers of music and we're excited to have you there to wrap up our season. The Lantern series is unique. It gives us a place around a table to talk about music that we probably wouldn't have listened to otherwise. You're hearing music from artists all across the globe in the comfort of a space in your own backyard. We're really excited to bring this to you and to our community. Thanks for learning about the Lantern series and what it brings to Woodstock. Now let's hear about the rest of the Elm Street season. We will certainly see some unexpected and unforgettable moments at the Lantern series under the stars. And while we cherish those moments out on the green, we also plan on creating plenty of intimate and relevant moments here in the theater as well. So rather than delay any longer, here is Siobhan with our main stage season. Siobhan Brumbelow, Associate Artistic Director of Elm Street. Thanks so much for tuning in. About four years ago, Elm Street began a process to select our theatrical season. We met with community members, a reading committee, had community input to select a balanced, well thought out, crafted season. But this season, we're doing things a little bit differently. For the 2020-21 season of character, we approach the season before reading any shows or selecting any titles, we thought about our community needs and we identified some uh, social and mental awareness, empathy, escapism, and unity. And with those in mind, we selected the shows that have balanced our 2020-21 season of character. And we're really excited to announce those to you guys. So let's do that now.
to kick off our season, we're going to be taking a comedic romp into the world of role play and fantasy with a play called She Kills Monsters. This story is about a girl named Agnes who recently lost her family, including her teenage sister, and she never really had a very strong connection with her sister. But through visiting her childhood home, she discovers a notebook that has a huge campaign for Dungeons and Dragons. And in order to make that connection stronger, she determines that she wants to play this game and find out more about her sister. So she gathers some of her friends and begins to play the game and is entered into this magical world that unfolds on our stage with sword fighting and monsters and lots of fun. Uh, but what she also discovers is not only the connection that she wanted with her sister, but more about herself and the warrior within her. There's something magical to be said about kind of letting your guard down and becoming this character in this imaginary magical world. And so by doing this show with the help of director Zach Stoles, who yes, was the director of Puffs for our last season, uh, we are gonna be bringing to life the imaginary world on our stage and also we're going to be outreaching into our community and making it very apparent that you can make connections with us here we're going to be offering workshops with weekly games we're going to be doing some DD one-shot campaigns and whether or not you understand dungeons and dragons this show lends itself to that connection you don't have to understand how to play to feel the connection of this story so we hope you join us for our first show and for our fall musical, we're going to be taking a heroic and a historical show that has to do with the Vietnam War in an empathetic musical called Dogfight. Dogfight is the story of a group of Marines who are spending their last night in San Francisco before shipping off to the Vietnam War and they are participating in what is called a dog fight which is where they go around town and they find the ugliest looking woman to bring her to the party and hope to win the prize but there is one particular marine birdlace who finds a peculiar woman rose and finds throughout the evening as they're going to this party that he's tricked her into going to that he discovers these feelings that all trained soldiers are not supposed to have, which is empathy. And it's a wonderful love story and a very, very powerful piece with uplifting music from Pasek and Paul, the power of character and historical awareness that we can bring to the stage with this show. We are going to be outreaching to our veteran community and engaging them in talkbacks and sharing their war stories and outreach events and meetings at places like Semper Fi. We're hoping to make connections beyond the stage with this community in addition to connections within our community with this show. So we're very excited and proud to be bringing Dogfight to our stage. And it's the holiday season, and what a better way to celebrate the holiday season than with a tradition near and dear to us. It's a Christmas carol. We're going to be doing this. This is the 18th year that Elm Street is producing a Christmas Carol and we are going to be unpacking it. It's going to be the same familiar show as last year but hopefully with some unfamiliar faces and we're encouraging our community to be involved with us this traditional season, this traditional time of year by caring for their community, by outreaching into the community and also creating new traditions with us. It's a wonderful time during the year. We love sharing this tradition with you and we hope you'll join us this Christmas for a Christmas Carol. <laughs> In some situations, you can be blindsided by the unknown. In 
March of 2021, Elm Street will be producing the story of 26 Pebbles, which is a powerful piece about a community that rebuilds itself after an unexpected shooting that occurs in the town of Newton. As Associate Artistic Director, I am taking the role of director for this production. And to be honest, during this unusual circumstance, we're all in. We have seen the community come together in support of individuals, of groups, families, churches, local businesses, first responders, uh, those that have to go to work every day. And the love that I've seen is so relevant to what this story has to say. I want to be able to connect with the community and find ways to share love and support with this piece. We are going to be having talkbacks. We are going to be having meetings. We are going to be journaling this process. There is something so powerful to be said about this show that we owe it to our community to be able to be open and talk with one another. So, and you never know what tomorrow is gonna bring, but we can take everything together one step at a time. So I hope you'll join us in seeing this show and participating in 26 Pebbles. And to finish off our main stage series in spring of 2021, we're bringing that fun, uplifting musical of Sister Act. Yes, Sister Act the musical, the same as the movie brought to life on stage. It's the story of a lounge singer named Dolores who finds herself witnessing a crime, a murder, and they have to put her into hiding inside of a church as a nun. She is inspired to share her music with the world. And so what she does is she takes the church choir and creates a community around her that she finds where she thinks she's actually helping others. It's the community that's helping her and she teaches them to raise their voice. And we're hoping that with this show, one, it is an uplifting show that we all need right now. And two, we want to share with our community and we want our community to share with us. And whether it's sharing music or sharing art or sharing your stories, we should support each other. And that's what this musical is all about. And we hope that you'll come and finish this season with us coming to Sister Act. We're thrilled to bring it to the stage. And thank you so much for tuning in to our 2021 season of character. We are really looking forward to the theater season creating some incredible moments here on the stage and we can't wait to celebrate those with you. 
Now, whether it be the theater season, the lantern, our education, um, I think, really anything, we, we've built it with you in mind. So if you are a part of selecting some of those shows or being a part of creating this next 2021 season of character, thank you so much for all that you have done to make that possible. And in addition to that, um, we just can't wait to celebrate with you at home uh, when we're all able to be together again, whether that's through the theater lantern or both. But beyond that, there's a couple of details that are we're changing up this year when it comes to uh, subscriptions and tickets. So here are a couple of changes. First with the lantern, we have some flexible options with you. We can do the full amount of, of subscriptions. Those are open now um, or should be here in just a few minutes, as well as pick six and pick five options. So if there's a couple, a handful that you did want to watch, you're more than welcome to do that as well through a subscription and then certainly there's discounted prices there. Currently, it's the tables at any level that you can subscribe to. So for the feeder season, there's a couple of things that we're also changing for our subscribers. First, very simple, there are no exchange fees if you have anything to uh, change up in your calendar. We've got you covered and it'll be a very easy process. The second change for our theater subscribers is something that I know a lot of people are interested in because you've said so. And so we've listened and we've made this possible. The front left section of our theater, prime seating, will have uh, reserved seating solely for our subscribers. So if you subscribe, you won't have to wait in any of those lines and you'll get that front couple of rows reserved for you depending on when you're coming. So definitely keep that in mind. And of course, we'll have those fle flexible options as well for the theater subscription. If you wanna get the full thing, you're more than welcome to, but we also have pick five and pick six available for the theater subscription. So definitely check that out. So currently, our, uh, in just a few moments, uh, all of the website pages will be live, as well as Facebook. So if you wanna get a social media reminder, you can go on and all of those should be published pretty soon here. And you'll be able to read a little bit more about each production or each uh, artist coming to Lantern Series or, or any of the other events that we have planned. Um, so definitely read up and find your interest, but definitely check out the subscriptions. Currently, only subscriptions are available. Single tickets or single tables for the Lantern Series won't be available until June 1st. So if there is a show or a concert that you're looking to see, don't wait. You might wanna check out some of those uh, subscription options because that's what's gonna go first and be available first. All right, I think that is it for subscriptions. Um, certainly will be online and also don't uh, you can also check out the zoom link after if you do have any questions about those but until then we have a really quick special announcement as many of you know we've been working on the Reeves house for quite some time despite setbacks we recently came upon an opportunity we wanted to share with the community as well as provide an update so we held a gala at the end of February and announced that John Whelan and his company, JW Collection, has offered to build the Reeves House at cost. This made our goal attainable once again, and uh, the funds that we raised that evening were go towards beginning construction. Many of you gave generously, and I know you are anxious to hear of the results as we were a little delayed given the current COVID-19 situation. Prior to the gala, we had raised about $500,000 towards Woodstock's Visual Arts Center. I am so proud of our community. The evening of the gala, you immediately gave $50,000 that night. But even more so, many of you were generous to commit gifts over the next three years, raising an additional $150,000 to total nearly $200,000 raised at the gala. So where does that put us? Between John Whelan and the JW Collections contribution, to build up cost and the $700,000 committed to date, we are just shy of fully funded. But we know that some of you uh, that went to the gala are still considering your gift. And we also know that recent tax laws have changed to make it favorable for donations of, of any size this year to be written off. But most importantly, we have and always will believe in this community, believe in you. So, I'm pleased to announce that we are moving forward. 
We are nearing completion of contract details and we expect to see construction on the Reeves House rebuild in the coming months from the incredible and generous team at JW Collection. And very soon, Woodstock will have its very own visual art center for us to continue to build our community, connect, and grow together. If this sounds like something uh, that you would like to participate and haven't yet, uh, we would certainly welcome that. You can visit elmstreetarts.org forward slash give and as you are filling out the form, you can click on the Build Our Story Fund and that will go directly to the Reeves House construction. And most of all, we look forward to sharing this new space by you and with you so that we can celebrate being a community together. Now, many of you that are watching know that we've been working on this for a while and we are excited to see it come to fruition. But also many of you have given towards this project, whether at the gala or beforehand. I cannot thank you sincerely enough for your generous gifts, your generous efforts, your generous time um, to not just make the Reeves House, but make our community better for it. I think it speaks to the resiliency of our community as a whole. And I can't thank you enough for it. Thank you. Well, that's everything. Whether it's the playgrounds and the bathrooms in partnership with the city, the Kish Center, I think education, volunteerism, the lantern series, the theater season, and yes, the Reeves House, uh, this isn't a small season. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun this year and we can't wait for you to join us. So in just a few minutes, everything should be live on our website. So definitely go check it out again. And just as a reminder, uh, in the comment section, there's a Zoom link. So we're gonna have a virtual toast to the season of character. We'd love for you to join us and uh, click on the link there. As well as if you have any questions in specific, our staff will all be available live via that Zoom link or in the comments as well. Thank you so much for creating this wonderful community. Thanks for joining us for a virtual season reveal, uh, despite the, our opportunity to not be uh, together in the same room, certainly we're connected and we certainly have tons of opportunities in the very close future for us to be together in person again. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening.